down here. So I've got my trim that I cut out the other day installed. And uh, I don't have it finished yet. I've got to putty to let it dry over. Not I was going to let it dry overnight, but I ended up being two days. So you know, of course, it won't. <coughs> I've already sent it with a 400 grit. <laughs> did that before it completely dried because it's really hard to sand that uh, putty, that wood putty, uh, if you let it dry completely. We used to, uh, well, I learned that in the cabinet shop when I worked in the cabinet shop back in the 80s, but uh, you don't want to do it too soon, but you don't want to wait too long either. You'll be working a long time. I didn't do 45s. I actually had intended to stop my route right there, and I forgot, and I just routed the whole board before I even cut it. Of course, it would have been fine if I was doing 45s, but my, I, I was worn out, didn't feel good, and the only saw I have that can do that, uh, it was gonna be real, a lot of work to get it out. I really kind of forgot. I thought about it at the beginning, and then I forgot. But uh, this is the vanity that I completely rebuilt. I built these whole, this set of cabinets about it. 18 years ago, and uh, the water got to the, the old vanity and uh, ruined it. And uh, this is a uh, can't see where I'm aiming the camera with that. This is the go ahead and put it to where I can see it. But uh, the doors I bought. I knew a guy that worked in the cabinet shop that built them for me because you can't you can't make these without expensive bits. Six hundred fifty dollars just for the bit to drop that arch. That's where some of the water had damage. That's I couldn't sand all of it out. But uh, you see on the inside of the door, I can see. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. The color difference when I sanded it down to the bare wood. So. I didn't do that again on anything else. I did the back first as a test and figured that out. Yeah, but this right here, this call we call it an airplane bit. About seven inches across the whole bit to route that. And uh, you made a lot of those doors back in the day. I ran my styles all the way to the ground. I like that now. We started doing that in about 84, 85, and I, st I like that. And the sink. Is the cheapest one Home Depot had, but what I liked about it, and it looks good, what I liked about it is it has a bevel that goes down. It gets lower and lower, and so the water runs on down into the sink. The faucet is new, uh, free replacement. I think it was a Price Fister, you know, a Moden or a Price Fister. I'm pretty sure it was a Price Fister. The gap back here is going to have a piece of cultured marble. That I haven't finished. I gotta gel coat it, and I've never done that before. I'm learning. It's gonna stand up about so high. And uh, that is a cutting board just to keep the water from splashing there on the upper. The upper's not had only only touched up down at the bottom. The rest of it's the same. It, it was okay. And. Uh, So uh, I actually built this vanity last year, and then my health got bad, and I wasn't able to finish it. And my brother finished the rest, putting them back in and re putting the finish, that very thing. It's the kind they use on boats. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's It actually stood up for about 10 years to all that water. <coughs> I guess I splashed too much when I washed my face. But uh, So it's going to look pretty good, I think. <coughs> It was looking really bad with the bad wood, you know. Now it's starting to look, it's looking good again. The trim at the top I made back then. And uh, it's, you know, I never did have to get taken out. I made a little bead route on there. I have a little bead router and I got it from this side and that side. And made a nice little bead on there. And uh, I actually just did it from one side here on the trim. Uh, I actually kind of forgot how I did it. I got my hand in one place and my camera in another. Okay, I actually forgot how I did it. And anyway, you cannot. You got to do it before you uh, rip your. Before you start ripping your uh, trim, and I ripped it 
that that uh, that white oak. This is a rough song. I guess you'd call it a rough song. It's you know you get them in whatever width you want. You go. I'll go to the the hardwoods place and uh, called Barney Robertson Hardwood there in Fort Worth, Texas. I go there and uh, pick out what I want. And uh, you know one side's straight and the other one's rough. And uh, and but it's pretty smooth. You know what I mean. But anyway, it's a uh, um, usually it's three. It's usually a sixteenth over three quarters in thickness. So that actually works out perfect with an eighth inch saw blade to get just about right at three eighths thick trim when you rip it down the middle. So uh, I was able to make my trim wide enough to co cover up. Let's see if I can get my finger to where. I, yeah, I don't know if it's showing up, but. Right there, there's just a little bit of darkness, but the underneath there, it's bad still. I mean, ugly looking, it's not. It's been re sanded and refinished. And uh, so, and there's a gap between the two cabinets, so that trim is wide because of that. The original piece I had was just narrow, like, like those up there on the top. So, that's it. And uh, see if it looks any different when the light's out. So that's it, and it'll be looking pretty good, I think, once I get the uh, once I get the trim finished. And uh, depends on which which angle you're looking at it. Sometimes they look darker, and sometimes they look lighter. It's kind of funny. That's uh, okay. Whoops, going too fast again. Okay, Don, I'm going up here to turn this off. All right, bye.